much thought do you really put into how often you should be laundering your clothing items? I've actually had college students that tell me they only wash their bed sheets, for example, when they go home at the end of a semester. They barely wash them, if at all, during the course of a semester. I've had some patients tell me they don't like to wash their clothing items very frequently because they worry that it contributes to aging the garment, that contributes to wear and tear, for example, over time. I've had people on the other side of the spectrum, which are often parents of young children that tell me they wash their children's clothing so often they're almost drowning in the laundry and it's consuming their day-to-day -day life. Plus, I also have other people that'll say to me, well, it's hard for me to wash my clothing very often. There's accessibility issues, whether it's access based on cost or access based on physical constraints. Some of my elderly patients will say it's really hard to reach into a laundry machine or bend down to get clothing out of a front-loading washing machine. And that can also contribute to how often they wash their clothing items just because they aren't able to consistently do this. This is a question that keeps coming up in social media and there's no real hard and fast rule that tells us how often we should be washing our clothing. Now there are a few things that bacteria actually do to clothing that we really need to discuss because this is something that we don't often factor into how often we should be washing our clothing directly, sometimes indirectly based on what bacteria might be doing to our clothing, but it's important to understand how bacteria can attach to our clothing and how we can effectively remove it. So there are several ways that bacteria can impact clothing, ones that you may not always attribute to the presence of bacteria. The first being malodor. When we sweat, that sweat serves as a vector to bring bacteria into our clothing. That bacteria is actually responsible for producing the odor that we might sense or smell from our clothing items. That bacteria can also contribute to discoloration of our fabrics over time, especially in areas that you might sweat a bit more, say under the arms or around the collar of your t-shirts and dress shirts, as well as into your pillowcases, for example. The last way that bacteria could impact our clothing is it can serve as a fomite where clothing can serve as a vector to transmit bacteria from person to person or place to place, which can potentially serve as a vector to spread disease. Many people may assume that simply washing your clothing with detergent will remove bacteria. This is not entirely true. It's also not entirely true that just cranking up the temperature on your washing machine to hot water will remove all of those bacteria. The challenge that we face with bacteria in clothing is that once bacteria enters clothing, it can attach to the fibers of our clothing items and create a biofilm that protects it and embeds it into the fibers. Once that biofilm is created, it can really stay in there. It can stay attached to clothing even through detergent, some bacteria are especially adept at withstanding high temperatures, so temperatures don't always produce results as well. Traditional detergents do clean our clothing, but the key concept to understand here is what does the word clean mean? Clean traditionally, when it comes to laundry detergents, generally references the ability to remove dirt, oil, debris from our clothing, stain lifting properties associated with laundry detergents, as well as depositing scents into our fabrics to give them that fresh smell. The action of detergents does remove the overall numbers of bacteria. So yes, it does remove much bacteria from our clothing, but not necessarily always those bacteria that are pretty embedded into the fabric. Another challenge is that certain areas that we tend to sweat, areas of our body where we have apocrine sweat glands, which would be under our arms, our chest, the groin, the face, have an added element of sebum and lipids along with sweat and bacteria that get into our clothing. And that sebum and those lipids can serve as a nutrient source for bacteria to use to support its growth. The more sebum, the more lipids, the more hydrophobic your garments are, say for example, polyester or other types of performance textiles that can be what we call hydrophobic, the sebum and lipids from your sweat can really stay attached to the fibers and allow that bacteria to have a nutrient source to support its growth. Cotton is a bit more hydrophilic, so even though it can absorb more sweat, more volume of sweat, ultimately the sebum and lipids from the sweat may not attach as easily, but still the bacteria can stay attached and embedded to those fibers. 
Once those bacteria are attached to the fibers of our clothing items, our bed sheets, our towels, and they're not washed very often, for example, you toss them in the hamper for long stretches of time, those bacteria will actually increase in numbers over time. That will contribute to malodor that you will sense in those textiles. And again, those can be washed out to some extent in the washing machine, but not entirely. So the goal is to try to get those out before they really embed into the fibers, as well as a way to get some of those residues out of the fabric as well, so that the bacteria doesn't have a way to simply stay attached to the fibers as long. There are several varieties of bacteria that tend to be found with sweat in our clothing items, and not all of these are disease-causing bacteria. There are ones that we normally find on our skin. These bacteria on their own may not always cause disease, but given the right numbers and the right amount of growth, the right proportions, they can produce some types of diseases on our skin. The key to understand here are best practices to one, reduce the number of bacteria in our clothing, just by washing our clothing with some level of frequency. So washing our clothing will reduce the overall numbers of bacteria in our clothing, but, but may not always get rid of those residues in our clothing that bacteria stay attached to that allow them to linger. When this happens, when you take your clothing out of the laundry machine, you might initially get that fresh smell that gives you a sense that it is clean. However, you may notice over repetitive usage of those garments, they start to smell quicker. So what happens is the first time you wear them and you exercise in them, you don't get a sense of that malodor right away. Say you throw them in the washing machine, you pull them out of the dryer, wear it again, you might start to sense that even with a single workout, the garment starts to smell. We've kind of gotten used to this because we've seen it for so long. However, the reason why those garments smell so quickly is because there's residues attached to the fibers of the fabric and bacteria stay embedded in there. Lift those residues out. There are a variety of ways that people approach this process. So what I've been finding is what people have been doing in social media is a process called laundry stripping, which is when they will take their clothing items and try to strip away some of the residues built up in their fabrics. I would liken this process to similar as using a clarifying shampoo because clarifying shampoos are used to lift residues that can linger in your hair over time. The challenge with clothing items, exactly the same with your hair, is that if you do that too often or you don't do it the right way, your hair can be left feeling dry and brittle, and we don't want that happening to your clothing where they can look worn a lot quicker or the color fastness might be affected. In laundry stripping, people are using things like borax and sodium carbonate to achieve the laundry stripping effect, and they actually do see a lot of residues come out of their clothing items even after they've been through the laundry machine. A safer way to achieve this for a product that's found on the market is something called fabric rinses. There's a product out by Downy called Rinse and Refresh that does do the same effect. If you put Downy Rinse and Refresh in the fabric softener drawer, it's released at a point in your laundry cycle during the rinse process and allows some of those residues to pull out as a lot safer for your fabrics only because it's not as harsh on your fabrics. So it's another way that you could achieve pulling out some of those residues that bacteria stay attached to that might assist in reducing odor that builds up in your fabrics over time. Also remember the importance of doing this with pillowcases because remember you're putting your face on your pillow overnight. The sebum oil lipids from your face along with bacteria settle into the fabric of your pillowcase and we wouldn't want that bacteria to accumulate over time because we already know that the bacteria that causes acne, Cutie bacterium acnes, can be present in that sweat and we wouldn't want that to start to accumulate on your pillowcase.